So when I first moved here, Comcast and Xfinity was pretty much the only option, and for me to get anything over like 20 megabits up, we had to pay for their highest tier, which was gigabit down, but that only gave us 40 megabits upload. That was costing us $110 a month until they started requiring unlimited data charges, which was an extra $30 a month, and then because Comcast is Comcast and they hated us, they started upping it to $150, over $150 a month. So so we were eager to find of any other option. So in February of 2021, Starlink became available and we reviewed that for about a year. That was lowering our bill to under $100 a month, so it was cheaper, although it was less reliable. And even though at times the upload was stable, it got worse and worse progressing into 2022, and we started considering other options that had recently become available in our area after we had already installed Starlink. And that brings us to today's internet service provider, which is T-Mobile Home Internet, which is not quite available for everybody, but if you're in my exact circumstances, it's pretty dang nice once you get through the headache of setting the whole thing up. Let's begin. So in my Starlink review, I've kind of mentioned how easy and simple the setup process was, and I loved how crystal clear the account management was, the website, the payment method, everything about it was super basic, but then it was the internet service at the end of the day that was just a bit too unstable, especially for all of the live streaming I do, and the speeds were becoming too problematic. So right off the gate, T-Mobile was more interesting to us because it was charging $50 a month instead of $100, so half the price of Starlink, but of course I was watching reviews and checking out other people's experience with it and it also seemed somewhat spotty because you're basically using a beacon that is taking either an LTE or 5G signal from a cell tower and then converting that into a Wi-Fi network. The reason I say this is kind of the opposite of Starlink is because the account management stuff and signing up for the service and setup, that was the more complicated part. That was more frustrating and annoying, but once the internet service got going, and it ended up being a lot, lot better, at least for my needs specifically. So let me just walk you through this process that was quite frustrating to me. Comparing to the fact when I wanted to order Starlink, you know, they updated the website and said, you know, put in your address and give us your email and we'll let you know when it's available. So it's a very simple website. I just plug in my email. One day I get one that says, hey, Starlink's in your area. Would you like to order it? I just go on the website. I put in my credit card and hit place order. Starlink arrives seems pretty simple. The setup also, as seen in our last Starlink 2.0 unboxing video, is incredibly easy. There's not even words in the instruction manual. It's like, put this thing outside and plug it in. And then you get a signal, and within like five minutes of unboxing, you have internet. Here's the process for T-Mobile. You have to check to see if you actually qualify. So you can't just go on this website and order it. You go on the website and you plug in your address, and you have to even provide your name, your home address, your phone number, they needed like way too much information just to check to see if you could get it in your area. And if you do happen to qualify and it is available, they say, hey, that's great. In order to get T-Mobile Home Internet, you have to text us. So it's not even online chat. It's like SMS texting or iMessage if you have an iPhone. Or you give a phone call and you gotta, you know, go through the whole phone loop of like telling a computer, I want home internet and let me transfer you to a human. And then that human doesn't know what you're doing. So there's no option on the website to just say, like, please ship the thing to my address. So I opted for texting because I hate being put on hold on the phone. And once I got connected with an agent via iMessage, by the way, this was not very quick. I texted I was interested in home internet and I had to wait like 30 to 40 minutes before someone responded. And then once someone did finally get a hold of me, they had to ask a bunch of annoying questions. Like, what do you use your internet for? How many devices are on the network? Who was your last internet provider. All kinds of things that are like irrelevant to the situation where I'm just like, hey, I want fast internet and I want it to be unlimited data. Can we just order this thing? And they were like, hold on, I have a few more questions. And I wish those were the only personal ones, but it gets worse. They actually have to do a credit check, which I'm sure is a legal thing, but it's still obviously just kind of an annoying part of the process because T-Mobile won't actually sell you the home internet gateway. They have to offer this service for $50 a month and then they loan you that hardware, but you don't actually own it. So the nice part of this service is it is contract free. It's month to month, so you can back out at any time. But if you do 
cancel, you're required to return that home gateway. If you canceled your service and decided not to return that home gateway, in the fine print it basically says they can charge you like $400 for it. And in order for them to loan hardware to you, they have to do a credit check, so they need your driver's license and they need your last four digits of your social security number, which is definitely kind of private and it feels weird to be texting a stranger that information, because this is not a robot by the way. You're just texting some T-Mobile customer support agent your personal info, and that feels just a little bit weird. But okay, whatever. I went through with it, you know, my credit score is good, I'm not worried about that. And they're like, okay, we did a credit check on you, you look clear, you look approved, and instead of just offering me what was already on the website, the customer agent then tried to upsell me on some kind of higher tier plan. This was like an hour into the conversation, by the way, and he was like, good news, I am happy to offer you a $55 a month plan where we can give you access to this mobile hotspot package that will give you two gigabytes of storage to use on the go, which is funny because you can actually take the home internet gateway with you anywhere and it will keep working. But he also wanted to sell me some kind of Bluetooth speaker. And he was like, you can get this Bluetooth speaker alongside this package for 55 or $60 a month and will include the 5G home internet gateway and everything while simultaneously texting me paragraphs about how they're waiving the sign up fee. He was trying to make me feel special. He was like, you know, just for you, I'm gonna waive the $35 activation fee. The hilarious part about that is all over the website, they're bragging about how this service has no fees. They're like, there's no sign-up fees, there's no activation fees, you don't need to worry about any of that stuff, and now this guy is bragging about the fact that he's waiving fees? Like, can you just be honest? Are there fees, or are there not fees? I don't know, but it was some just marketing baloney that I hate putting up with, and this whole time, it was kind of late at night, I just wanted to order the stuff. I just wanted to, you know, put in my home address and say, ship it here, and, you know, just be done. It was kind of getting late, and my wife was like, have you ordered it yet? And I'm like, I'm trying. So after he bragged about waiving fees, I was like, dude, I don't care about these mobile hotspot beacons. I don't want any Bluetooth speakers. The website said it was $50 a month. That's what I want. And he said, okay, fine. I guess we'll just give you that option. I didn't want you to miss out on this amazing opportunity. So there's just a lot of that used car salesman jargon just to get your order in. But they finally did place my order and I gave them my credit card info and everything. Still no charges were applied to my account. And the weird thing about this was I gave them all this personal info and afterwards, there's like no way to check your order status. You get these emails from T-Mobile that say like, hey, we got your order in, but you can't tap on a tracking number or anything. You don't really know when it's shipped. He said it would come within a week, but I had no way of knowing at like what time in the week or what day in the week. There was no tracking info of any kind. They even sent me an email that said your order has shipped, but the order has shipped email had no tracking number. Have you ever seen that before? We want you to know your package is coming. And I'm like, great, can I see where it is? No, no, that information is private. It's coming directly to my house, you know? I mean, I work from home, so it's easy for me, but imagine if someone didn't work from home and they knew there was gonna be a kind of expensive package just sitting on their doorstep. You would like a tracking number, right? But eventually it did finally show up. And just on that day, I did my unboxing video, which a lot of you guys seem to enjoy. And again, as you saw in that video, the setup process is a little bit problematic because it has dated firmware by default. So when you plug it in, it'll start working. And I started to get a signal and then it crashed and the internet turned off. It sounds like lots of people in the comments were having the exact same issue. Turn Turns out you get this error message that says, you know, the beacon has a file corruption and it's got to restart, basically when there's a new firmware update available. So I don't know why the screen on the gateway can't just say, hey, by the way, you have an update available. Instead, it just says system error, unplug and replug again. So it crashed three times in a row before I plugged it in again and it finally stayed on and started working. And okay, after all that negativity, that's when it started being pretty dang good. So the built-in Wi-Fi range is not that bad. I mean, we have a pretty small house in the first place, but yeah, it easily reaches every corner of our place. And at first I was doing speed tests and getting around 150 to 200. Then the follow
following day, I was actually able to clock one speed at over 300 megabits per second download. I never saw Starlink get that fast, so I was already happy about that because I was like, this is half the price and I'm getting faster speeds. And the upload as well has proven to be far better than Starlink. Even at its best, I'm consistently getting over 30 megabits upload with T-Mobile and occasionally seeing it break 40, sometimes even break 50, which is awesome because this is less than one third the price of Comcast, which is what we had before. And Comcast would never break 40 megabits per second upload. And we were paying a crap ton of money for that. And I was so disgusted that I had to pay for the gigabit plan in order to get faster upload speeds. Now the fact that this is the cheapest internet option I've ever had at my house, and I'm getting faster upload speeds than I've ever had before, occasionally breaking 50, I was really, really happy. I was like, okay, as a content creator and as a live streamer, having solid upload speeds matters a ton. And no matter what I asked on the phone, T-Mobile insisted there are no data caps, there's unlimited data, you don't have to pay extra after you hit a certain amount. And I said, well, I was texting the guy like, hey, I use a ton of data. I'm doing live streaming every single day. I'm uploading multiple 4K videos constantly. And he said, yeah, there's no data caps to worry about. So I trusted him. The only disclaimer that I think you guys should know about is that within the app, T-Mobile themselves even says after 50 gigabytes are used, you may see throttled speeds or slower speeds. So even though this is advertised as home internet, I guess they put you in some different data bracket after 50 gigs, which is honestly not that much. Most households will easily surpass that in a couple of days. In case you weren't aware, I use uh, uh, a little bit more than 50 gigs, but the good news is even after I surpassed 50 gigs, the upload was still reliable it's a consistent signal so I'm able to do live streams for hours and hours and hours like the last Apple event I was live for I was basically streaming for six hours straight and there was basically no major hiccups every once in a while you'll get a little latency spike and you'll notice the ping go up and occasionally when live streaming very very rarely there will be a brief little drop in bitrate but the funny thing is OBS shows me in real time what my bitrate signal is and I'm live streaming consistently with T-Mobile at 5,000 kilobits per second when it has its hiccups it dips down to a thousand which I actually had to have my live stream set to 1000 kilobits per second when I was streaming with Starlink so that was like best case scenario if Starlink was working reliably it was 1000 kilobits per second and with T-Mobile worst case scenario it goes down to a thousand I could even stream at 10,000 kilobits per second on T-Mobile pretty consistently and without issues but I don't think the difference could be detected because YouTube compresses live stream so much so I found the happy medium at 5,000 kilobits per second and it's worked great for that. We've never just had a full-on outage quite yet in the past few weeks of using the service where everything just shuts off. I have not run into that but for someone who's posting a lot of content it's been wonderful but keep in mind after that 50 gigs are used I believe you are basically deprioritized compared to all other T-Mobile phones on the network. So the reason I think my upload speeds have remained so good even during these times where I'm being throttled is because I'm sharing this cell tower with a bunch of T-Mobile customers. Most of those smartphones are probably all using download and that's where I saw the most amount of throttle. So if download speeds are important to you, maybe T-Mobile home internet won't be quite as good as something like Starlink because like I mentioned in my review, the download consistency of Starlink was fantastic. We never had cutouts with that and we consistently were getting, you know, well over 100, sometimes 150 or 200 megabits download. That seems to be pretty average average with the Starlink internet, but with T-Mobile, as of lately, it rarely is able to sustain a download speed over 100. Usually, I see it jump up past 100 for a second during the speed test, and then it mellows out around 90, sometimes less, and occasionally I'll do speed tests where it doesn't even break 50 megabits per second down. So, if you're a heavy download user, as in you download huge files or huge games all the time, this might be something to look out for, and keep in mind, even 50 megabits per second down download is still enough to play 4k content and watch live streams watch YouTube videos you know you can still do the basics with that the only time I've noticed speeds dip that slow is when I'm doing speed tests we have never been in the middle of listening to music or watching a TV show or movie and notice oh no it's starting to buffer however I should probably disclose there have been a few applications on our smart TV that have gotten way way slower since switching to the new Wi-Fi it doesn't happen with every app like YouTube loads like fine but 
with Paramount Plus and with Hulu and with Prime Video, sometimes I'll open an app and it just takes forever to load and it'll say an error occurred. We can't open this or play this content at this time. I'm hesitant to blame it on T-Mobile though because I can't tell if our TV is just getting old. And you know, we haven't had this issue on any other device. Like I can stream Discovery Plus or Paramount Plus directly off my phone with the Wi-Fi. There's no problem. It's just the TV that doesn't like it. So I thought for a while there that must have been an issue with the mesh Wi-Fi networks, but I did separate the two, which was actually kind of complicated. There's a bunch of settings within the T-Mobile Home Internet app, and then there's different settings in your actual browser. If you plug in your IP address, they give you more options that aren't in the app. By default, it's a mesh Wi-Fi system, and I opted to have them separate so I could connect to the 5 gigahertz network or the 2.4 gigahertz network. The TV is just on the 2.4 gigahertz network, and it still has issues loading up certain streaming apps, but not all the time, just occasionally. So it might be a problem with the TV, but I've never done a speed test and noticed the internet be like below 10 or 20 megabits per second. The lowest I've ever clocked it at was 38, but even when I did that, the upload was over 50. And I'm an upload guy, so as long as I have fast and reliable upload speeds, I'm very happy with the service. But I just have to admit, having two separate apps to manage my account is kind of annoying. You have your finance app where you manage your account like banking info, but in that app they also tell you how much data you've used, and then the home internet app is kind of pointless. It basically just tells you if your internet is on or not on but that's a whole secondary app just for that. You need that app to set up the gateway, and that was kind of problematic, as I discovered with all of the crashing and having to reboot and plug it back in. I wish I could do everything just through a single app, and also T-Mobile is bombarding my email with T-Mobile Tuesday, sign up for these new promos, but I can't sign up with those promos because I'm not actually using my phone with T-Mobile, it's just the home internet thing, so they just kind of email you annoying stuff, and they're definitely trying trying to get me to switch my phone to T-Mobile away from Mint Mobile all the time, which I'm not a fan of. So there's certainly a lot of legacy business model of like, come on, you can upgrade, you can go to our plan, and you gotta have all these separate apps, and you gotta get all these emails all the time, whereas Starlink never had any of that crap. You could manage everything just through the one app. You could manage uptime, you could manage network stability. There was a lot more information in the Starlink app than these two separate T-Mobile apps combined, but the service itself ultimately I think is what matters the most and the fact that we've been able to get pretty fast internet for our location and even with throttled speeds are getting consistent upload and even if you're throttled you can still watch YouTube you can still watch Netflix at a high resolution that's why for us in our circumstance it made the most amount of sense but if you care more about download speeds or you're worried about getting throttled because keep in mind we all live different distances from T-Mobile towers my speeds could be very well well different from yours depending on you know if the t-mobile tower is in your backyard versus, you know, miles away. I honestly think Starlink would probably be a better option for people if you care about having faster download speeds. But for us, the fact that we can get it for $50 a month, and that's a perfect round 50, that's not before sales tax or any fees or anything. And it's even better because if you have the Apple card on an iPhone, you get 3% cash back through T-Mobile with auto pay turned on. So it actually ends up costing us $48.50 a month. And we've never had internet in our life that cheap. I'm happy for you overseas. I know some of you have the cheapest internet in the world and it's fiber and it's great. I'm very happy for all of you. But for where I live, even the cheapest, crappy, dirty Comcast plan was $55 a month. And that was before sales tax and fees and the upload was like 10. So the fact that we can get something cheaper than the cheapest Comcast and it's way faster and the upload speeds are reliable and great means that it's solid for us despite all of the headaches of dealing with T-Mobile and all of the account management annoyances, like the apps are not well designed. They ask me to sign in like every two seconds and I'll sign in and then it asks me to sign in again. There's annoyances along the way, but I'm particularly impressed that we can even take the gateway with us. I've already met several people who do this, but even though it's only guaranteed to work at your home address, it will basically connect to any nearby T-Mobile tower and you can connect all your devices to it and basically have unlimited data, even though you are deprioritized on the network. In a lot of places, even if you're deprioritized, you still get fast speeds. The whole system is powered by a single USB-C port on the back, which is pretty awesome, although it requires a decent 
wattage. I tried to power the whole gateway off of my MacBook Pro USB-C port and that wasn't enough. So you'll probably need a fairly beefy battery bank if you want to take this thing on road trips that can output at something like 45 or 50 watts. But it's still possible. You could take it with you to a hotel room or on a train even, theoretically. You could just plug it in and have Wi-Fi as long as there's a T-Mobile tower nearby. And I like that and I'm hoping the price stays what it is because we're fairly happy with it other than our few issues with the TV. But that might not even be T-Mobile's fault at the end of the day. So in the meantime, this is our home internet service and for the most part we're very happy with the performance but let me know if there's other things you guys want covered in the future I absolutely will do six month to one year reviews of T-Mobile home internet to let you know if anything's changed over time but all that good stuff let me know what you're thinking down below this is your Apple Sheep here I'll see you all in the next one